So welcome to the next video for the uh, Crate project. Um, we are in Photoshop right now and I have Quixel Suite 2 open. Um, if this is the first video you're watching, please go back and watch uh, chapter one. That will show you how to make the 3D model that we're going to use. Uh, but today, in this video, we're going to use uh, Quixel uh, to add texture and uh, and materials to our to our crate. So uh, I started out in the last video. I ended with the um, the project opened up in in Photoshop already. But I thought I'd start from having closed everything up because it's been a few days and I've been working on some other stuff um, and I didn't want to just leave Photoshop open hogging up all my RAM so um, I thought I would start with how to load projects once you're done so here I've opened up Quixel and you can see I have it conveniently shortcutted here on my taskbar um, and I want to get back into the project I could reload everything but that would actually create a new project so instead, what I'm going to do is up at the top here, uh, under mesh or above mesh, there's base creator. Next to that is a little tab that says load inputs. And then another one is load project. Load project is where you load an existing project. So I'm going to click that and it brings up a window. And this is the folder that I put it in. So, you know, navigate to your folder, whatever you called it and there's this uh, XML file, this notepad file. It doesn't look like anything. It looks like the stuff that we usually throw away, but uh, this is actually your project file. So if I click that, it opens everything up, which looks like a whole lot of nothing uh, because we don't really have a lot in this. Um, but if I open 3Do, and give it a second there it is there's our crate now we're ready to get started alright so a few things about Quixel um, how to navigate and look at your 3D model so I'm holding down the alt key and I'm using the left mouse button and the alt key I'm moving the mouse around uh, holding down the left mouse button and that's letting me orbit around the model in blender This is just done with the the middle mouse wheel holding down the middle mouse button But in Quixel it uses the alt key and the left mouse button This is actually the input for programs like 3d studio max Maya and unity which is where this comes from so a lot of the um, a lot of the shortcuts come from that likewise there are um, the buttons for changing the views to orthographic views like we were with the number pad in Unity is actually done with I, J, K, and L. So imagine it if for anybody who's watching this who's a gamer there's oh hello uh, there's W, A, S, and D for moving around it's the opposite W actually does this. It turns on wireframe, uh, which can be particularly handy uh, for when you're texturing so that you can see what your wireframe looks like. Uh, so you'll also notice something about the wireframe here. There's these extra edges in the middle, and everything is a triangle instead of a, a uh, square, instead of a quad. This is actually normal so don't freak out and think that it's it's mangled your 3d model uh, this is actually natural triangulation every uh, so one thing that I didn't cover in the previous videos and this is something more conceptual um, but you typically when you're 3d modeling um, for the most part you know this changes when you're doing static models like this like this crate which don't really have to be rigged but if you're doing something like a character you typically want to model in uh, four-sided polygons as much as possible four-sided faces called quads um, so usually when I teach 3d modeling I try to 
embed that habit very early, which is why I stick to quads as much as possible in some of these videos. But all quads are actually two triangles. Uh, it's just up to the program uh, that you're using whether or not it wants to show you that triangulation. So the, uh, the reason this exists is because when you are flexing um, with a posed character with an armature, uh, that that triangle, that extra edge, is actually where the, the face will bend. So that's what's going on there. Um, if I haven't put you to sleep already with that, um, little bit of 3D modeling theory, uh, we will move on. So I'm going to hit W again to turn that off. All right, so we're looking at a flat box. And likewise, if we look at uh, these images, you know, they look pretty gray. That one's purple because it's the normals but they're gray because we are looking at gray. So let's let's get this thing um, textured. So what we want to do is uh, with my 3do open, I'm going to go over to my ddo. Remember we're working in ddo, the orange one, uh, and 3do, the blue one. So I'm going to go over to my ddo and I'm going to go down to uh, the add material button. Uh, so on this little lineup of icons, there's add smart material on the left, and then there's add material. We're going to add material. So I'm going to show you how to make a material. So I click this, and uh, here we go. We have a bunch of materials. These all come with Quixel, and so you can see there's a pretty large amount of content here. Um, you know, these are all things you can add to your projects. Uh, so it can be handy if you look on the drop down on the left. So you can either manually find the thing you want. So you can see there's quite a bit. Or you can go to this uh, list of materials and they have different, different types of materials. So if we go down to metal, we can find a different range of metals. There's also patterns. Uh, these are more, well, we'll show, I'll show you what these type of things are for, but you don't usually have to worry about those. Um, so we're up in under DDo materials, basic materials. So we're going to go to metal and I'm going to make this, uh, let's see, is that, how's that look? Um, yeah, let's use steel dirty. So find steel dirty. The other thing you can do too is um, if you're having trouble finding these, there's this uh, search bar up at the top. But I've gone down to steel dirty and I double click on it. And now my entire crate is going to be steel. I didn't want that. That's not what I wanted. I wanted steel. Hold on. Yes, delete that layer. That's pretty cool, but I don't want an asphalt one. So let's go to steel. Wonder why it chose asphalt for me. Create. All right, there we go. So we have dirty steel. Um, so you're going to notice two things. One, this is extremely shiny. Uh, you know, if you want it that shiny, that's cool. I don't because I want this to be a little more banged up. So you'll see tabs at the top um, and these control different channels. So albedo, remember, is our color. So the actual color of this. Gloss is how shiny it is. Normal is how uh, bumpy it is and then specular is the you know ability to reflect light so I guess gloss that sounds like gloss and specular are the same thing specular reflects light gloss is how intensely it uh, reflects light so I want to turn down its glossiness a bit so I click the gloss tab again up at the top of the DDo window and you know it, this can get kind of confusing so really 
try to pay attention to which tab you have open. Uh, you'll see they, if I switch, for example, between albedo and gloss, you can see they change. Um, what's going on here, so if I go to albedo, which remember is our color, um, so there's three little squares here in every layer. One is the material visual uh, visualizer itself, so it just shows you a picture of the material. This one is called the Dynamask, which um, shows where on the model, it, it's basically a UV'd image that shows where on the model um, the, the material will be. So right here, it's all white because it's everywhere on the model. And then here is uh, the reflectance, so the color. So if I were to do that, um, it would lighten up the steel a little bit. And if I changed it to this, now I have red steel. Okay, so this is the color. So I'm going to settle with a dark gray here because that looks pretty good. Um, but if I go to gloss, you'll see this gets lighter, and that's because this is no longer this the color. So if I do that, it's not going to change the color at all. It's going to stay on this left side of the color picker because it only cares about the gray value. So darker is less reflective and lighter is more reflective. So if I went all white, it's going to be super duper reflective and shiny and mirror-like with gloss turned all the way up. And then if I go down, I'm going to go to sort of a dark dark gray you get this and that this is actually where I want it I want it to be this sort of grungy barely shiny uh, steel okay and I'll I'll do have some fun with this in a second um, all right so that looks pretty good so the next thing I want to do is I'm actually gonna hit the add material button again down here if you remember uh, and we're going to add another metal, and I'm going to add shiny, shiny aluminum. And that's going to seemingly overtake the whole thing, and I'm actually going to make it very, very glossy. Um, it is already very, very, very glossy, but I'm going to make it very, very, very glossy. And I'm going to make its albedo pretty light. Um, so here's, but all our cool gunmetal, like, grunginess is gone, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm doing this to show you a feature uh, called Dynamask. So if I go, um, if I click on Edit Dynamask, and it doesn't really, I don't believe, matter uh, where exactly on this you are. But uh, again, if we look at our layers, there's that middle white square click on that and it will say would you like to edit in uh, paint in full shaded mode uh, yes I would and then it's gonna do its loady thing and then it pops this up alright so what this does is we are going to edit where on the model this secondary shiny material is the idea being we want to Give me a sec. Sorry about that. Um, we want to make this like where scratches and edges and wear and tear would be. So the idea being it's dirty metal except for where the dirt was scratched off. Um, and now we've scratched down to the shiny part of the metal. So. Um, a handy tool for this is, so we've popped up this Dynamask editor. The other thing we can do, uh, because we want to make sure that this is going to actually show up the way we want to, is if we, in 3Do, so I'm in my 3Do window, if I go up to the upper right hand corner, there's this performance thing, don't worry about that. Um, but then there's this thing that says show mask PBR shading. So if I click show mask, 
Uh, PBR shading, all this is, is it's a list of ways that the um, list of maps you can look at when you're painting. So if I go to AO, there's, actually, what does fix seams do? Nothing I can really care about. Okay. Um, if I go to AO, for example, there's our um, ambient occlusion. If I look at bump, there's nothing there. If I look at opacity, it's all white because it's solid. If I look at emissive, it's black because it's not going to be lit. Uh, and if I look at mask, it's all white. Oops, except for that little thing I did. Uh, <laughs> because I... Let me erase it. There we go. Um, it's all white because we haven't painted on any any different information. So um, here's what we're going to do. Now that we're looking at this white mask, I'm going to go back over to my Dynamask editor, and I'm going to pick... I'm, I'm going to browse some of these. So I click some of these big patterns, and what these are is they are places where uh, they are different pre-done algorithms for for showing uh, different materials. So uh, that's interesting. Not really what we're looking for, but that's interesting. Light edge scratches. Let's look at this. Uh, it could be better. No. Edge tarnish. Let's see. No. It's not what we want at all. Um, stopped giving me the mask, but that's okay. We're going to go with light edge scratches anyway. I think it just got an error on me. Of course it happens when I'm recording video. Um, all right, back into our Dynamask editor we go. Light edge scratches, let it do its thing. It's done nothing. What is going on? Am I looking at emissive? Ah, there you are. Okay, it was showing me a missive for a second. There we go. All right, well, let's just stick with this light edge scratches and not screw with it too much. Um, so that's going to give us, if I go back to PBR shading, here we see our, our uh, beaten up metal again, but we don't really see the, we might see some hints of the, of the uh, edge scratches of the aluminum, but we don't see a whole lot. So let's fix that. Um, the other cool thing about this is that we can paint our our mask if we want to. So I'm gonna go into mask and um, so this has full painting tools like Photoshop for anybody who's Photoshop savvy. Um, and if you're not, you're about to learn about Photoshop painting tools. So it has uh, up here on the uh, left side, it has brush, there's B, and if we hit E, we go to Erase. Um, so you can click on the interface here, but the shortcut for Brush is B, and the shortcut for Eraser is E. If you hold down Brush, the B, Brush button, and then right click, and hold down the right click, you can change your brush size, which is very handy. And then next to these two buttons, you see the actual brush alpha, which means the shape. Um, and that looks pretty boring, but if we go into these other tabs up here, so I clicked on the brush tip shape and um, I clicked on the brush tip shape and there's uh, up here above where these circles are there are different, uh, there are different options. So we can do a 
plethora of different things here. Um, so let's go with, let's see, that's kind of neat. Um, I mostly stick with the damage. So we're going to go with damage and we're going to grab this guy. Now we have full control over the size, uh, the spacing of these things. So spacing of each blotch if we're drawing a line. Um, we can do the angle. The other thing we can do, you know, we can edit in here. The other cool thing we can do is if we go to the left side here and click the checkbox for shape dynamics and click on it, now we can change other things like what's called size jitter. So not every instance of the uh, brush that you paint, if you're just painting a solid line, is going to be the same size. Um, you can do what's called angle jitter, which is already set to the max. Roundness jitter, same thing. It's going to affect how round each blotch is. The other cool thing is if you have a digital art pad, um, you can click control and click on pen pressure. Now, I'm not using my art pad right now, but when I am, I would use pen pressure so that if I'm holding, if I'm pressing the pen very lightly on the pad, uh, it'll make a small in this case brush size because I'm under size jitter and if I'm pressing down very hard it'd make a large brush same thing you know you can do these other things uh, you can do it the same way with for example transfer where um, you could make it you know be very light lightly transferred um, you know it would be a very uh, transparent application of that brush if you're pressing down lightly in a very hard application if you're pressing down harder. So um, that's what transfer does. I'm not going to use it right now because I'm not using my my tablet right now but um, safe to say that I'm pretty happy with this option. So I'm going to uh, let's see I have my opacity turned all the way up and I'm going to go so next to the uh, next to the brush is the opacity so this controls how, how solid the paint is. And I'm going to go all the way up. And then the other thing is it goes uh, pressure sen Oh, wait, no, uh, let's see. This is, what, is it, what does it call it? But basically, this is painting between black and white. This is almost like your color, um, your color uh, picker, except we only work in black and white because we're working on a mask. So if I jack this up to white, for example, um, and I start painting this edge, you know, I can start to see I can start to paint oops. Uh, let me erase. So it should be noted that um, erasing is it should be noted that erasing and painting share the same brush. So I made a little mistake and I had to go back to erase. Um, damage go back to my damage and then I do my thing there we go they share the same brush so just keep that in mind when you're doing this um, but another thing you can do that's important to know is if you want to paint straight lines like I do you can click once where you want to start a line and then hold shift and click on another so you see we're making these straight lines at the corners. And it'll keep going. The reason I'm doing this is I want to do sort of a banged up looking corner thing. Um, 
so if I turn off mask shading mode and I turn on regular shading, now you can see um, that our aluminum is starting to peek through a little bit more because it's starting to get really shiny on the corners. And I could continue to, so let's, for example, jack up my, you know, for example, if I painted here where the lighting is hitting it, you can see where it's getting very shiny. And I don't care about this face as much because I'm going to change it to wood in a second. Um, but, you know, I can start painting on the corners and you can see how it's coming through. But uh, making this sort of combination of, of uh, materials is how you can create some really cool materials. So I'll just do this a little bit. Uh, you can go on as, as long as you want with it. I'm just going to stop here for the sake of teaching. Um, so I like that. That's that's okay. Uh, that's looking pretty good. Um, so I go over to my Dynamask editor and I click this big button at the bottom of it called Accept Mask. So if you just shut down this editor and go straight back to Dedo, uh, all your work will be for nothing. So make sure you click Accept Mask. So we accept the mask. All right, so now that is what our material looks like. That's pretty cool. So uh, we have a problem though. We have all, this is a, a all metal crate and we wanted to have wood. So what I can do uh, to fix that is if I right click and um, it'll bring up this little tab here that says add smart material or add selected material. So let's go and add a new material and let's look for wood and there we go there's the perfect crate wood right there so I hit create and now it's gonna add because again the mask is all white it's going to add it to the entire material so uh, where I right clicked is still active and I right clicked on the face that is wood, um, I'm going to click a mask selected material to ID. Okay, so I click that and it does its thing. And there we go. All right, so now we have the two differentiated. All right, so um, I'm going to stop there for this video, but that was uh, basic material editing in Quixel. Uh, in the next video, we're going to cover um, some, some more uh, advanced techniques and finish this guy up with some detailing.